here we are we're live welcome folks uh viewers if there are viewers i hope there are viewers perhaps eventually there will be viewers <laughs> uh I've, i see at the moment there are no viewers um but that could change <laughs> one hopes um yeah. welcome <laughs> viewers like live or future viewers to kitchen party where uh jared pekacek uh located in Seattle, Washington, is going to cook a, a, an ambitious dish for us this afternoon. Um, and the rest of us are basically, in, in a virtual way, going to hang out in his kitchen and talk. Uh, it's virtual because A, there's a pandemic, and B, we're 2,000 miles away from him. Um, <laughs> But through the magic of Streamcast, uh, we can all hang out and talk just like, you know, and drink and, and we can pretend we are all in the same place. So uh, why, don't I, why don't I first uh, go around and just get everyone to introduce themselves and then Jared, you can launch into your, um, your cooking frenzy. So Jared, <laughs> people probably like know who you frenzy. are. <laughs> um, I'm Jared. I... Uh, host the token podcast by the Bywater, um, and that's probably where some of you are coming from. Um, and I like cooking, so here we are. I don't know what more intro do you need right this second. <laughs> you can you can retain. You need to retain some mystery. So you know, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> that's all you need. You'll to know. know more about hey. me than you want by the time this is over. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dave, David J. Fernandez. Um, Hi, yeah. Hey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I live in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, I make films when, when I can. Otherwise, I'm homeschooling a five-year-old until tomorrow because she's back in class. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I am also concerned about her health, obviously. But... <laughs> <laughs> but right very, now, I'm just feeling like, uh, you know, I could like have a life again for a minute, right? Until they shut it down again. I think they canceled March break or something. So I don't know. We'll see how things go. Nice. <laughs> okay. Megan, hello. Hi. Who are you? Uh, well, I don't know. That's a big <laughs> I, I, I know. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I can tell you what I do. Uh, I don't know who I am. Um, I, so my name is Megan Johnson. I'm a psychotherapist in Toronto. Um, and I have uh, I have made a little ball of dough, and I'm actually planning to follow along with Jared and make some dumplings. Oh, you I, are! Oh my gosh! Yay! Yeah, I have barely read the recipes. Um, I also didn't get ground beef, but I do. <laughs> I do have turkey meatballs in the freezer that I'm planning to put <laughs> inside. But I didn't want to go to the grocery store again because it's the yeah pandemic. So anyway. <laughs> Turkey meatballs are like ground beef. That is, that is, I, you know, I thought you were just going to like skip the ground beef, which seems to be kind of key to the process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I hope that's just put right some, like, put whatever in there. Yeah. It's right. it doesn't you know, matter. marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Rebecca, hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Rebecca and I live in Toronto. Um, I'm a social worker. I work in mental health like Megan, but I work with, uh, Mostly folks with schizophrenia who are having housing troubles. So sort of not folks ready for uh, psychotherapy. Yeah. Um, and I have a 16 year old who is around um, and he's not going back to school. So still homeschooling. And I've realized I never wanted to be a teacher. No, no, and this no. is, this is really parents. solidified it. Oh yeah. There's no more proof needed anymore. After like the first week, it was it's like no, no. Yeah, not, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah. <laughs> I I yeah. I am not. I am. I am. I feel very validated in my life choices as a non-parent these days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. I still regret not having kids and not not this year. <laughs> All, all, all of my child, reason not to have kids. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All of my child-free friends have have said all this year, yes, I made the best decision. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so Jared, I think I'm gonna try and put you <laughs> I'm gonna try and, yeah, I'll try and embiggen oh. you. Um 
I have, and Megan. Oh, oh sorry, Me Megan, do you have a question? I do. I if I wanted to like send people a link to come watch us talk. Uh -huh. um, where can, what do I send them? I was thinking about uh, just, just the megaphonic, <laughs> just the a Twitch slash megaphonic link. Uh, we'll take them here. I think if you use your cursor, there's like a little share button at the bottom there. Oh wait, no, sure. Okay, sorry, never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, because this is on stream yet. Okay, is that did is that like wh where's the Twitch link? Uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry, it's it's um the it's the it's uh Twitch uh backslash <laughs> megaphonic. Um, it's not in front of me right now. Okay. <laughs> oh. I that earlier. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to I'm trying to embiggen Jared, and for some reason I can't figure out how to how to embiggen him without um, he he embiggened himself. It was a minute yeah. ago. Yeah, he did it himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'd like to I'd like to have the others on like a side view. And oh, oh there we go. No, hold on. Ah, we're crying. That's out. weird. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to sneak in a beer that. while the yeah. while the tiles were all changing, but I think... oh wait, I know. Hold on. Here we go. Like no. like we're yes. Game yes. Game okay. <laughs> There we go. Jared, I'm sorry, but you are now, there we go. We Now we can see you and we are still here. So please take it away. <laughs> Tell us um, what you will be cooking today. <laughs> I am cooking Monty, um, which is an Armenian dumpling. Um, the <laughs> So I've never made it before. Um, the recipe I found is like, there's a lot of argument over whether this is Turkish or Armenian, and I'm not going to get into the whole Turkish versus Armenian thing right now, <laughs> but I am part Armenian, so <laughs> um, and that's why I wanted to make these, actually, um, because uh, you know that, that sort of that immigrant cliche of, like, what the son wants to forget, the grandson wants to remember? Mm -hmm. um, in this case, I'm the grand, great-grandson trying to remember um, the stuff that my immigrant ancestors decided to leave behind. Um, so I'm making these dumplings, which are actually really similar to something that we, my family does still make, which is pelmeni, which are boiled rather than, this is closer to a pot sticker thing. Um, it's really simple, it's just time consuming. So it's, an, it's a pasta dough and some meat, whether lamb, beef, or turkey. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just gonna, just gonna get started really. Um, is this something, have you had these before? I haven't. <laughs> um, it's just very, very similar to something that we have made. It's just folded differently and it comes with this yogurt sauce that I'm really excited about. It's, it's, it's interesting. Like when, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's interesting what you said about what the, what the son wants to forget, the grand, the grandson wants to remember because I'm Polish, and so there's all sorts of Polish pierogi and, and all sorts of food, which my grandmother very purposefully didn't teach anybody <clears throat> because we had to be, well, they were American. We had to be American or Canadian. And so she left with all this really interesting food that I remember eating, but I, n I don't remember seeing anybody cook. So good for you for going for it. <laughs> I even started um, an Armenian language course and then forgot about it. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> the grandson is forgetting as well. <laughs> um, I'm just so, going to yeah. really quickly narrate what I'm yeah. doing because I'm yeah. just making the dough really fast. Um, it's just egg, water, a little olive oil, salt, and flour. So... So is this like a pasta e dough that you're making? It is very much a pasta dough. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna. Have you made pasta before? <sighs> Fresh pasta. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Wait. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. But it was a long time ago. Okay. Okay. That's emotion of our pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Deep pasta regrets. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to jump in and say, uh, it looks like we have about five people watching. Hello, if you're Hello. watching. Um, and if you want to, uh, if you're on Twitch or I think also YouTube, if you want to, uh, if you have questions for Jared about this process or questions for us, or just want to say hi, you can uh, say something in the comments and I will see it. So please feel free to 
let us know what you're thinking about the about the mentee process. <laughs> Hi. Oh, it's Hillary. Hello, Hillary. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So I have, I have, I own a pasta maker and have not yet made pasta. I think that is. I do not own a pasta maker, so I'm going to be using a rolling pin, and it's going to be very labor intensive and noisy. <laughs> using a, a a rolling pin, yeah. I don't, it's also, I don't have a rolling pin, and I'm going to be using a wine bottle. <laughs> so, <laughs> super awkward and noisy. <laughs> hey, it's Inbo. Who remembers some of you from Sunday brunch chat? <laughs> uh, and. Hey, it's Hillary. I can make. Oh, and hello. hey, it's Jess. Oh, hello. <laughs> that's a that's a Jared person. <laughs> hello. Um. So can only you see them, Nadia? I can only only I can. Well, I mean, if you are watching this on um, Twitch or, or YouTube, you can see the other people who are commenting. Like the, the oh, other. Oh, I see. Okay. Um. Well, but I, I don't think there's way. Sorry. Oh, I saw the little comments coming. Up. I saw people's yeah. comments coming up. Oh, you can well. see comments. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm on. I'm logged in as admin, so I see different things from you guys. I'm not sure quite. If what you're not doing. full screen, you can see the comments on the side. I think. Okay, cool. Uh, good to know. Um, <coughs> so while Jared is mixing the dough. Uh, do anyone do do any of you have uh like interesting foods that you're you that are like traditional in your family that you remember growing up that your parents made or your grandparents made that you know how to make or want to? <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I was thinking about this. Um, so I'm I'm one of those Canadians where all of my great my, all my grandparents and some of my great grandparents were born in Canada and similarly mm -hmm. and all four like from different European countries and so similarly I think I think there was a, a push to like just come to Canada and like forget where you're from and just like bunker down mm -hmm. and like try to survive in this vast yeah. wilderness um and also I recently actually been trying to get to know more of where my ancestry from and so I just recently found it so it's like Irish, German, Nor and Norwegian and Scottish. And um and and all super poor. So like no one like they weren't bringing over good food. They were bringing over like we know how to cook potatoes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that like and so like there's anyway, so that in combination with my parents growing up in like the 1950s happening in North America, I would say I've mostly been learning how to like let go of most of what I learned about <laughs> from my family, which is like <laughs> dinner is a good idea, you know, like frozen fish sticks constitute like a good meal. Like, sort of, <laughs> like yeah. And like and also like a single mom too. So this sort of like deracination mm. from culture and then the 1950s and like sort of fast food. Um uh, and then a single mom who is just like hustling. So um yeah, I would say that I became vegetarian at 17. And I think that was because like, I just wanted to take control of what I was eating. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's sort of when you asked when I saw that question, I was like, it's it's a, I'm feeling this urge to like, go further back, but it won't be from my, any relatives I know, it'll be like, from trying to research <laughs> countries. Yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of the same in that my parents, uh, neither of my parents is really into cooking at all. And so I have these two, my, my mother's from the Netherlands, my father's from Bangladesh, and I don't really, I don't have a particularly close connection to either of those. Um, but, you know, like I visit my dad's extended family, like my extended family through on my dad's side, and there's like amazing food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. there isn't a connection, there isn't a connection of I don't know how to cook the like five different amazing kinds of fish curry that is like Bengalis are, are all about the fish curry and they're <laughs> really really good but I, I don't actually know how to do that um <laughs> Dave how about you food family <laughs> yeah uh, similarly my my family moved here in the in the 50s too I think after mm -hmm. after World War II the Europeans just sort of oh, like oh. Ah, they just they were all like let's get the hell out of here so um so my I had an uncle who 
and immigrated here first and then he opened the floodgate and everybody else like from the family came with him basically and they all lived in the same house uh, mm -hmm. at Danforth and Broadview wow. uh, for oh, quite wow. some time. Yeah, and that was the Greek neighborhood and they were Portuguese, so they, <laughs> they, had, to go, they had to go around to get their food stuff. But um, like we don't, I, as far as I know, like we never had uh, dumplings growing up. It, like mm -hmm. in, in my family, it was always, it, it always seemed like an Asian, uh, or, or I guess like European, like Polish kind of like the pierogies and that kind of thing. There isn't a Portuguese dumpling. <laughs> yeah, that I know of. I mean, there totally could be. I, I'm not right, any right. kind of Portuguese food expert, you know. <laughs> but um, but something that we had that was, you know, where you had to make a filling and, and you deep fried it. So there were some similarities where um, it's called pastege de bacalao. Oh, uh, yeah. It's also called uh, bilingus de bacalao as well. Um, it's the same thing as far as I know. But it's like potatoes caught. Uh, like the Portuguese salted cod, which comes in like that stick, uh, of like just that salty stick. And you you, you mm -hmm. soak it in water, you boil the potatoes, you mash it all together with salt, pepper, and parsley, and then make it into a ball and, and deep fry it. And it, it's just amazing. Like uh, it, it's so, so tasty and very hard, like very time consuming, not hard to make. But mm -hmm. uh, the last time I tried making it with my mom when, when she was alive a few years ago, uh it took us like probably like half a day uh mm. between making it and i mean i don't have a deep fryer so we're doing it in a wok or whatever so <laughs> you know you're just not getting the you don't have a, it's not very efficient but uh but and you're not really supposed to deep fry anything in olive oil but i think they do <laughs> it <tastes> amazing. It, <laughs> but why wouldn't you <laughs> higher, lower smoke point or whatever it is but uh it tastes great <laughs> so so it's really olive oily and crispy on the outside, but really oh. chewy and hot and mushy in the middle. And <laughs> it's, yeah, it's great. I love it. Oh my God, that sounds good. I think I've had those. Yeah. I think they sell them at the Portuguese bakeries. They sell Likely. Like they might call them bolinhos. <laughs> I think a lot of the Portuguese people in uh, in Toronto from um, the Azores and from the mainland of Portugal. So my, my family's from Madeira which is another island, another archipelago of islands that's mm -hmm. a lot more south and, and warmer and closer to, Af co closer to, it's kind of like if you drew a line from Casablanca out into the Atlantic, you would almost hit Madeira, so. <laughs> Hillary, Hillary from another island also likes to sell fish, she's saying in the comments. <laughs> oh, great, yeah. Yeah, they're great. They're, and you can find them at Portuguese bakeries and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jared, let's check in with what is happening here. There are more ingredients that have appeared. There are more ingredients. I am making the filling now, which is just ground beef, onion, parsley, paprika, salt, I think some pepper. Mm -hmm. I away from the recipe, so now I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's Again, this is a really simple recipe. It's just yeah. time consuming because a it's a ton of, of making little dumplings. Yes, yes. Okay, that is that will be the exciting part. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll I see. I, saw, I was looking at the recipe you that you, you you sent it over, and it's there's like it's also like a two stage cooking process. Like it, yeah. Gets, and then it gets, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Uh, Megan, are, are you cooking? Are you like cooking? Well, mine is already made because you told oh. me to pre make the dough. Mm -hmm. so, and then my, idea. my meat part's already in the freezer, so I'm just. Mm -hmm. Just waiting. I'm gonna probably. Yeah. Say, so my friend Una and I, some of you know, um, we made like we spent. We were talking about pandemic and like lifestyles, like pre now, how boring life was, <laughs> like <laughs> and other pandemics, but also just people living like 1800s, 1700s, 1700s, and how. Anyway, she was making. We made nochi. Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Little nochi together. It took forever. But it was just lovely to be like shaping dough with someone else. And so I think sometimes some of these recipes take forever because they're from a time when you had a lot more time. <laughs> yeah. And you had forever. <laughs> yes. or, or you had like like eight family members who, yeah. you know, extended family members who could come and help you help you do it. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from the audience, Jared. Uh, can you put other things in the dumplings or is it considered sacrilege? <laughs> I think if you put something else in there, it would just be a different kind of dumpling. Yeah, fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be sacrilege so much as you're just making a different recipe at this point. Um, the recipe that I'm making actually says that some people use lamb. I'm using mm -hmm. beef because it's cheaper. Um, 
I think once you get outside those two, it's probably a different kind of Monty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say sacrilege, but I'm not one to talk because I'm just rediscovering the somebody. <laughs> I don't know where the rules are. <laughs> So Jared, speaking of like cooking with large families, um, yes. you were saying, <laughs> this is a thing you have some experience of. Sorry, I asked you this question just when you were getting a thing. That's fine. <laughs> I forgot to get all of my stuff out first. Your mise en scene is now. Is my mise en place. Class, class, yes. <laughs> okay, yes, cooking I'm with back. large families. <laughs> <laughs> Explain your background in this in this area. <laughs> um, I have five siblings, so whenever we undertook any cooking project like this, it was always a lot faster and easier because everybody was involved. Um, what kinds of things did you did you did you like to cook as a family, or were there were there things that like got cooked regularly? Or for special occasions? Yeah, like for special occasions, we would make something that I think I've mentioned already, um, pelmeni, which is a similar recipe and involves a lot of folding and stuff, but it's a lot closer to like wontons hmm. than this is. Um, and that was always a special occasion thing because it would take the whole family working all at once, rolling out the dough, cutting the dough up, filling the dough, folding the dough, um, then boiling the, boiling them. There was, and we would put a dime in one of them. So if you got the dime. Oh, you're you just, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You're the I don't know if it meant it. anything. You just got a dime yeah. and that was a big thing if you were five years old. <laughs> you got a dime. That's yeah. cool. like many cakes when you were kids? <laughs> that, what? No? Sorry? Oh, my parents, we used to have full cakes that were like, had coins wrapped up in wax paper, like embedded yeah. in the cake. Yeah. And some money mm -hmm. cake. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you could, you could request one for your birthday. Yeah. Uh, in like the, in like the seventies. Right. Yeah. And now when you look at all the, you know, the parenting books, putting coins in food is not. <laughs> It's tetanus prevention. Yeah, exactly. Right. Build your immune system. A little copper. A little copper. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is, I got this is not a dumpling story, but it is a children eating money story. <laughs> good, good. Yes. <laughs> my my uh, 16 year old that's roaming around out there right now when he was about one and a half he was standing on the couch I remember wearing just a diaper and he pulled out of the couch cushions a dime and I could just tell and I said Jason don't eat that he went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> swallowed it and he was the second child so I didn't do anything. I knew it would come out from the yeah. first child eating uh, a Playmobil head. It just comes out. You just have to make sure it comes out because then you have to search around through their excrement. So I send him off to daycare the next day and I'm like, all right, you guys, he ate a dime. So I'm sorry. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. We have to do this all the time. <laughs> so, I, so I come in the next day and the daycare, or sorry, later in the day, not the next day, wasn't that good at daycare, uh, the, later in the day. And Mark, the daycare teacher, walked up to me and said, we found a penny. <laughs> so either he regularly eats money or he's making change. <laughs> That's right. so we had to go through the entire house and make sure that there was not a single piece of money anywhere because clearly the child just ate it he's making change <laughs> <laughs> so, it's really funny he he did not get a money cake at any birthday. No. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, and um, is it? Yeah, it just makes the good point uh, <laughs> to my adult brain. It sounds like a good way to chip a tooth, well, which is also you, what I <laughs> they tell you to eat carefully. Yeah. And we were all responsible children. There you go. Who then ate carefully until somebody found the dime, and then we just. <laughs> It was a teaching moment. It was a teachable moment where you learn to eat things carefully because they might yeah. have like foreign objects in them. Yeah. 
That's how it all started, right? Oh my lord. <laughs> So how when you're when you're cooking as a for a family of like six kids how what 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 were the what 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 dishes were easy to cook in that volume that you guys ate a lot of and how much of them <laughs> did your parents make um, you know we didn't we didn't worry about worry so much about um, whether it was easy to cook for a lot of people it was just a matter of doubling or tripling or quadrupling yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. the recipe was. Mm -hmm. So we ended up eating all kinds of stuff okay. just because my mom didn't want to be bored with right, the food yeah. she was eating. <laughs> um, and then after a certain point, um, how old was I? I think I was 12 or 13. She started having us each cook one night a week. Oh, so no, for a, yeah, for a certain period of time before some of us moved out, there was she was cooking like one or two nights a week mm -hmm. at, if that <laughs> and the rest of us were learning how to cook and learning what could be done easily for eight people <laughs> um there was a lot of spaghetti in the early years yeah <laughs> i would imagine see I, I think i think like a large a large group i think like that of chili and then i'm like i don't really know do you guys who who has cooked for a really large group and what is what what was easy to do <laughs> oh, I used to work in a women's shelter and I, so mm -hmm. we, I used to cook for 32. There were 32 Wait. people. <laughs> and uh, so it's funny because I actually, I knew how to cook for one and I knew how to cook for 32. <laughs> so then later when I got married and had a family, I think <laughs> these huge pots of stuff and eventually uh, I had to learn how to tone it down. But we, <laughs> we would make um, lots of curries. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a women's shelter, and a lot of the folks that came to the shelter were um, refugees, and a lot of them were from Eastern Africa at the time. It was a lot of Somali and Ethiopian folks, <laughs> and so we did a lot of chickpea, a lot of curries. We did a lot of goat, um, and just anything saucy that mm. can be served on rice is right. perfect yeah. for a large number of people. And it's also great because if you make a mistake, if it's a big enough product, you can correct it quite easily because mm -hmm. you just keep adding more. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, just like too much salt, dump in something else, you know, not a salt. Yeah, <laughs> just, just yeah keep, exactly. Just keep adding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Megan, it looks like you have dough, so I'm going to try and enlarge you. See did the wine bottle add. work? Ooh. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> so I did... Uh, as a project, I made dumplings a few weeks ago over the holidays as like oh, yeah. time. So this dough came out much better than my other dough. So I'm learning okay. something about dough. Um, <laughs> I also think this dough had more, oh, I put more oil or something. I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I, I was doing a lot of pottery before the pandemic and I can't anymore. So like kneading the dough and making, like making the like dumpling i've been trying to find things i can do that give me the same yeah vibe. yeah yeah like I've, started, mm -hmm. I've gotten really good like plaster scene and i've started making uh, um while i'm working with clients i'm making mini sculptures under the computer <laughs> <laughs> i've made a whole like modern art sculpture park on my desk <laughs> yeah, nice. i honestly think it's making me a better therapist because my mind works a little too fast for myself mm -hmm. sometimes but it actually kind of slows me down a little bit. And it grounds you a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, it's been <laughs> by the end of the pandemic, I think my whole office is just going to be filled with <laughs> sculptures. What I always find challenging with the, like for making um, pasta type dough and also for pizza and things like that is when you're trying to roll it out thin and it just, it just wants to frink like. Oh, I love that. Experience. Back into it. <laughs> you just gotta keep moving. It's like alive, right? So you just gotta yeah, yeah. It's like and it's like nope. And then, and it's like nope. <laughs> yeah. I've heard like letting the dough rest for a while sometimes helps with that. Like you stretch it out and you just like leave it for a bit and then you come back to it. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait a little bit, for Jared. Okay, I'm gonna return Jared to center stage here, but. So are we, what, Jared, what stage are you at in the process now? Have you I'm letting the dough rest for a little bit. There we go. 
<laughs> so nothing is happening. Okay, maybe I will. Do... I'm excited about these dumplings. They're kind of open face, right? Like they're like little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're a little bit like shumai. What's a shumai? The uh, the Chinese dumpling that's just like folded up around the filling, but the filling is still exposed. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So it's a little bit like that, but shaped differently. I'm excited. My first batch of dumplings uh, did not look great, but they were so delicious. I couldn't believe, like, I couldn't believe how much better fresh dumplings were than frozen ones. <laughs> I was like, it's well now, worth Does anyone else have the experience of, and again, like this was sort of the seventies, my mother would make something called chicken stew and she would put, dough in it yes. dumplings yes. Dumplings. Yeah. yes they were disgusting oh yeah <laughs> and then later when i moved to toronto and because i never associated pierogies as a form of dumpling right mm -hmm. so then when i moved in tr to toronto and i would go to asian style restaurants they would say dumplings and i'd be like ah! uh. and then i would and then they wouldn't just be paste they would actually be yummy things full of delicious <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very different. The, the word dumpling means a lot of different things. I've had now, I've had uh, chicken stew dumplings that were amazing. Like, if oh. they're done right, they're actually delicious. They were but not done by my mother. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my, my good friend makes like a chicken and dumpling stew that's to die for. Like, like, you don't think just having big clumps of dough in the soup are good, but it's so good. But I think. Are they, are they fluffy? Is, is yeah, that what, they, should be, yes. they should be like they should be like a nice uh, like a fluffy biscuit basically. Yeah. It's just kind of it's kind of like it's gooey on the bottom, but in a good way. <laughs> right. So not mm -hmm. like chewing gum if it was made of flour. <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's over mixed. That's what's happened there. Yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's like they're like biscuits. You have to like really really lightly mix them, or they turn into yeah, yeah they turn into hockey pucks basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> So I was gonna ask. Uh, speaking of dough, Dave, <laughs> I've been following. I've been following your sourdough adventures since the, oh, yeah, since yeah. the beginning of the. <laughs> yeah, I managed pandemic. to get in the sourdough about two months before the pandemic started. Oh, so you're like everybody <laughs> was making sourdough. Um, yeah, so I don't know what what that was luck like or whatever, but uh, I, I got a really good starter from a friend of mine. And uh, and uh, and just good like I, the thing that I had tried to make sourdough and bread in the past, and it always ended in abject failure, uh, like just awful, just like just like dense and thick, and and just like not something you wanted to eat really. Um, and the thing that changed it for me was just weighing the ingredients. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know, right? I didn't know you had to weigh the, but when you're making bread, you really want to weigh the ingredients because like flour, flour weighs the same, right? Like, but with all the air in it and stuff, it, it can be, you can have a lot more flour, a lot less flour depending on Hot on your measurement uh, tool. So this, I, this oh, is oh, wow, dude, look at that. You pull that right out of my I mind. I'm like, on this, <laughs> look at that. Looks so good. <laughs> 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 Your social media has been a stream of these, and I'm like, mm. pretty much. I know. I, I don't even use Instagram, I think, except for the red <laughs> porn, basically. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I got a good starter from a friend, and then I, I got measurements. And then having measurements, uh, the proportions of things was, was the key to unlocking sourdough achievement. Um, so yeah, it. Uh, I, I make it like every couple of weeks or so. I make two loaves and I, I slice one, put parchment in between it, stick it in the freezer. And then yeah. when you warm that when you warm that up uh, out of the freezer, it tastes like you just baked it the same day. It's amazing. So oh, nice. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy and to been... share the proportion, the recipe. It, it's actually, there's a lot of steps, but it's, uh, it's yeah. super easy. Like all the steps are easy. There's just a lot of them, you know, that, like, <laughs> Hold and let it sit and not let it sit and you know it, it's it's not a passive thing it's not like making pizza you know, where you just throw some things together and in an hour like you can make pizza right like it, it's great, but but uh, it's not hard yeah the thing of beauty how do you okay so this is this is something i've been wondering how do you uh get those perfect concentric circles on on the loaf like how does that work 
Uh, it's like a, it's like kind of a wooden, like a wicker sort of uh, proofing basket. It's called a Benetton or mm. like French. It might be Benetton. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you can buy them wherever. Like I don't like supporting Amazon, but you can get them on Amazon. You can get them <laughs> in different places. Uh, and so when you put your, you kind of you lace it with um, rice flour because uh, rice flour won't stick um, to the wood. So, oh. so you, you kind of, I have like a little, uh, you know, like a flour or, or icing sugar shaker thing. I just put the rice flour in there and I kind of get the, the Benetton uh, nice and saturated with rice flour. And then you put the dough in it and it sits in the fridge overnight. So it proofs mm -hmm. in the fridge for about 12 hours after you're done, like a warm, like a room temperature proof. And then, um, you know, the next day, uh, or even a couple of days later. I mean, I haven't. I have. A, my friend has has experimented more with leaving it in the fridge longer. The the lacto part of the like, because sourdough culture is like yeast and um, lacto bacilli, whatever it's called. Uh, you know, bacteria. So it's the it's kind of a symbiont of the two of those things. Hmm. Um, and in the fridge, the the lacto fermentation kind of takes over, and that's what gives it that, that kind of sour that more sour kind of flavor uh, that we love in sourdough. So uh, the longer you leave it in the fridge, it should uh, produce more of a complex sour flavor, but I've only ever done like 12, 14 hours kind of thing. I like mm -hmm. to make it the next, as soon as possible, basically, because it's <laughs> an entire day of like, you know, scheduling yeah, yeah. yourself to, to get to the point where you can bake it, so. Have you done other stuff with the starter, like pancakes, uh, crackers, stuff like that? Yeah. Yes, I have. Yes, <laughs> pancakes are amazing. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh, wow. The recipe that I've been using, I think it's from King Arthur Flour, uh, so you can Google that. But uh, it's like sourdough pancakes, and they're very um, they're very moist. They're almost like crepes or something. Mm. But uh, yeah. but man, are they ever! They are absolutely delicious. My wife is gluten free, and so I torture her with these things, right? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I, have, I, I have I have a friend who has made who has made gluten free sourdough starter. I don't understand because like the whole thing about bread is the gluten, so I don't know how you make gluten free yeah. sourdough bread. I don't know, but she she does it, and so apparently it is possible, but um. But yeah, I have made, I also made um, uh, waffles too. And mm -hmm. those, those were fantastic too. Yeah. They're, nice. there's, and I'm not sure if I've made anything. Else. Uh, pizza, I tried pizza once. It didn't really mm -hmm. quite, I was trying to make deep dish and I think I got it over my head. So. <laughs> <laughs> too many things. Yeah, it was just, it was very. Too many things. <laughs> was too much going it on. Wasn't, it didn't have that, <laughs> like, just the, like, gooeyness that you want from a, a deep dish pizza. It was just, it was just very bready. Got uh, so I think maybe I needed more toppings or something to kind of suppress the bread. <laughs> 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 so I still have to figure out how to make pizza, but sourdough pizza is amazing uh, if you can figure out how to do it mm. right. But, and I, I do love making pizza, but I haven't, I haven't, like my dough is not, is not perfect yet. Like it's, yeah. it's still, it's still a work Tricky. in progress. It is yeah. tricky. Like it's easy on, on paper. It's like water, flour, salt, whatever. <laughs> but you know, but to actually to get it to, I don't know, because like you gotta cook pizza. You gotta cook really hot. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a gas yeah. oven, and I turn it up to five fifty when I make pizza, and I just like I like brr, I like blast it for like <laughs> eight minutes. You know, but uh, I've done it on the barbecue too, and it like it tastes good. But there's this there's something I don't know what it is. Like there's something I still haven't figured out about. Yeah. about the pizza dough yet. So, yeah, I find maybe I make a fair I mean, bit of pizza dough. I, I make a fair bit of pizza and I find the dough is either 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 it's like foomph and it's like a focaccia with like a layer of <laughs> toppings or it's like yeah. foomph and it doesn't rise. Like it's it's sort of like mm, oh, oh, can, can we get can we get somewhere in between these two extremes somehow? But, yeah, and yeah. I, I don't mind I don't mind like fluffy pizza. Like I don't really like thin crust pizza. Like I like it yeah, to yeah. be kind mm -hmm. of like substantial, but but uh, I don't know. There's 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 some balance of heat and and timing and stuff that I haven't quite figured out yet. So, yeah. <laughs> Have yeah. any any of you guys, uh, any of the others, uh, been basic be, bleh, been baking things that are yeast risen or bread or anything like that? <clears throat> I I did I did bread. 
I did, Brad, because, uh, but recently, like I didn't do it at the beginning of the pandemic. I did it sort of midway point, hopefully. Um, and, uh, and so I did the New York Times recipe that everybody swears by, and it went great, except for that it was so dense. Yeah, yeah. Like from the outside, it looked, and I, you know, of course, put it up on, on Facebook and it was like, woo. And I was like, well, <laughs> so it wasn't the sort that you would slice. It was the yeah, sort yeah. that you would like take a chunk of and eat it with mm -hmm. soup or put yeah, butter and yeah. jam on it. Um, yeah. And yeah, and I haven't figured out how to make it less dense. Hmm. That, that's a, that is the trick with bread. I don't know what it is. I even had a bread maker at one point and it's got really specific recipes and you're supposed to just throw everything in and boof, you got fluffy bread, but it doesn't always work out that way. Yeah. Cause my, my breads would come out, the top would be like this. Kind <laughs> 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 of like a reverse sine wave or something. <laughs> I'm like, why, why is this egg? It's like, so, it's like this brick of sorrow. <laughs> that I <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it, everybody made it look so easy, but it's, it's actually much more complicated than, than it might appear on the surface. Yeah, and that's where weighing comes in, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weigh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> weigh, weigh the weigh the ingredients. Yeah, I never heard that. With that's hmm? Yeah, I never heard about weighing it. That's interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. Baker's ratios for bread. Yeah, totally. Okay. You need the it's the ratio of water to to flour to whatever else. Yeah, it makes because all the difference. Yeah, that that's the only way that I made bread I could eat. Like, yeah, not, <laughs> use this, you know something to keep my car from sliding down the driveway in the icy weather. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing though. Like, if it's if it's dense, as long as it's not like gummy in the middle and that's just yeah. like a sad failure but if it's super dense yeah you, you can still just like eat it with like stew or whatever it's still yeah. it's still bread it's still good it's just not like you can't make yeah. a sandwich <laughs> like a german rye kind of thing like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> or soda bread that's a marvelous i i, I don't know why i'm i'm afraid of i've never really cooked with yeast so i just looked mm -hmm. up irish soda bread recently that you cook with yogurt so I haven't done it yet, but that's on my list. I've never oh, made oh, soda bread. Yeah. I've made like scones and biscuits and things, but never like soda bread. Mm -hmm. I have, but it was a long, long time ago. It might be worth revisiting. I made banana bread last weekend um, and then realized it's just basically cake. I didn't really yeah. want to think I was <laughs> and I live alone. So then I just ate so much. Like I could have frozen some, but like it was just amazing. Some decision making your living alone during yes. a time like where you don't have anyone over for dinner and stuff has been really interesting in making food. Um, I actually got like a little cookbook, uh, French cookbook and like for, for cooking for one. And that's been really fun to like do more high end cooking yeah. for one person. And nice. it's actually not enough. I keep doubling them because I'm like, well, I, I do want to eat this tomorrow for lunch too. Like yeah, this yeah, yeah. 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 for like one meal, but it's actually <laughs> sort of actually like Rebecca saying like one or 30. Um, yeah. For me, like one person meals were often, you know, like a sandwich or a quick salad, but it's been fun to Hi, like. I'm with Monroe. <laughs> It's I think that's someone you know, Jared. No, I'm just waving. Uh, <laughs> I still cook for eight people and then just eat it all. Yeah. <laughs> but I have like over a week. Time. Yeah. I just get really tired of eating the same thing all week. Ah. Yeah. Oh. So. <laughs> oh, it's Jim. It's Jim Monroe. Hi, Jim. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, I figure, I figure, Dave, I figure you probably know Jim through, <laughs> through things. Hi, hi. <laughs> Um, Low fi sci fi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to? Are we? How, where are we in the cooking process at this point? Um, I am just about to roll out the dough. I was watching the clock. Yeah. Watching it tick towards half an hour since I let the dough rest. So I will be starting that in a minute. I'm just going to move some stuff off the table that will make a lot of noise while I'm rolling stuff out. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> just, yeah. I want to. I want to ask. Um, uh, maybe go in the second view option so we can see. Um, is there a huh, like this? Oh, look at that! Oh. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting like tech suggestions. Yeah. In the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, so there's like rolling and uh, dumplings are starting to happen. Um, since Jim is here and it, and it comes up, uh, Jim, don't, no worries about interrupting. Uh, Dave, do you want to talk about the, I was going to ask you about the, um, so Dave makes uh, indie horror sci-fi films. <laughs> do you want to oh. explain to the world like wh what they are and... and where they where, where they live and stuff like that and how you got into that <laughs> sorry that was like a really large yeah no, 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 no. <laughs> i mean there's not that many of them i, I didn't I, really i didn't really that sort of like came out of my mouth without like being frozen <laughs> my brain yeah, at all I mean, the, tra the trailers are all on my website uh <laughs> david fernandez.ca spelled the same way without the j um and uh yeah so uh, there's a few like there's a few things i'm working on uh it, like we're we're at the point of pitching them now so there's scripts and there's uh like pick pack pitch packages and thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh all that kind of stuff available so we're, we're we're at the point of like looking for some producing partners to, to make these things so uh there's a tv series that i'm i'm currently working on called limbo uh and it's about two teens one who's dead and one who's a ghost, oh, sorry, one who's a ghost and one who's alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and they basically, they need each other uh, because the ghost wants to get out of the house, but the only way the ghost can get out of the house is through the, the girl's body. Uh, and the girl wants to visit her dead father, um, but the only way she can do that is to go into limbo and, and the ghost has, has sort of a way uh, to allow that. So it's sort of a metaphor for consent. Oh between the, these two people and negotiating mm. those boundaries uh, between living, dead, uh, sex, and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and then there's sort of a Buffy the Vampire element to it because like uh, the the dead are, are kind of, they're, they're kind of tired of being dead. So they, they, <laughs> they want to be living in the world again. And, and these, these types of uh, we call them the shadow creatures. So they're they're basically they're looking to possess anybody they want without their consent. So, <laughs> so they're kind of they're having to fight against these e these spirits who want to come back without consent, and then their own kind of negotiated uh, version of this. So I, I'm mm. probably not explaining it very well, but that, no, that's really that really intriguing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so there, we did a little concept trailer for it. Uh, things have changed quite a bit since since we made it. At the time, it was called The Wait. Uh, we were trying to make it into a web series, but then that didn't work out. So now we have a, a, we, a different people involved in it, and it's kind of, it's all sort of grown and expanded from there. So that's called Limbo, and you can see the trailer on that website that they just, um, somebody thankfully very yeah. uh, nice <laughs> and the thing for you the chat yeah and then i there's a there's a feature film that our, our script is is now ready for uh it's not something that i've written but i co-developed it uh with a pal of mine uh and it has to do with a, a robotics engineer who accidentally gets kind of tied up in this neo-Nazi plot to to blow up a bunch of uh, churches and synagogues and start a race war? So she she gets kind of done over badly by these people, and then goes back. Uh, she lives. She goes back to the robotics lab where they're developing an exoskeleton, uh, and she steals it. And then she gets all the devices you can attach to this thing and hunts down all the neo-Nazis and and and. Kills them in very glorious ways. It's basically, so, it's basically Robocop. It's basically Antifa Robocop is what yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's like an, an, Antifa uh, Terminator. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you would describe it entirely. But uh, so we're we're on the verge of pitching. That. <laughs> we're on the verge of pitching that one too. Uh, we we were pitching earlier versions of it. It got a lot of like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know so I don't think we're I don't think we're gonna get any Canadian content money for this. Uh, so I think it's all gonna be private funds, uh, given given the nature of it. Um, but I, I think it's I think it's Sorry. timely to remind people that Nazis are bad again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, I, I, I think that we, yeah. I, I think it had gotten a bit blurry over the past few years that mm -hmm. we, 
being super right wing can lead to terrible things. So I think it's, yeah. and, and it used to be a, such a big part of pop culture, right? That mm. yeah. the Nazis were the bad guys. And then all of a sudden the Nazis are, you know, over a part yeah. of doing God knows what. And so I think it's a good, I think it's a very timely to remind people that they need to be um, robot killed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they need to be, yeah, exactly. Uh, the tagline for the movie is make racists afraid again. So yes. <laughs> we'll see if anyone has the nerve to give us money to make it. But uh, oh, so yeah. I, I, you can see, there's a short. There's no concept trailer for that one, uh, but it's on. There's some. There's a blurb about it on the website. Uh, and the the third thing is a sci-fi TV series that I've been working on for a couple of years. There's a script and a pitch package, and it has to do with a woman who's uh, taken a party drug uh, that's supposed to kind of enhance sexual experiences when you have it with someone at the same time, uh, except that she wakes up the next morning and can can sense digital information, you know, like she's basically become a computer uh, oh, wow. and, and can access anything in spite of any kind of uh, uh, of tech, of uh, security features, you know, like she can bypass it all. So she's become like the most dangerous person on earth because she can, <laughs> she can basically listen into anything, anytime. Wow. Yeah, uh, and that one's called Meld. Uh, and there is a, there's a pretty cool content trailer for that on the website. The website? Uh, <laughs> uh, as well. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> I love this. This should be my I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, pictures of that. I have a website. Let's <laughs> I don't even do anything. I just like talk. And it appears. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So, uh, so the, 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 I'm kind of, it's like, you know, in the pandemic and everything, ugh, it's like, you know, pushing these three giant, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but uh, it feels like, it feels like, uh, you know, uh, the film industry never really got completely, it did for a little bit, got a little bit shut down, but things are ramping up. And, oh yeah. Um, so uh, looking forward to be pitching these projects this year. So yeah. Thank Great. You. Wow. Yeah. I just, Quickly going to hang on if we can get a look at what Jared is doing with dough. Yeah, I, think so. I have. I have rolled the dough out and cut it into strips, and now I'm going to cut it into squares. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Just okay. I'm now like following along with you. Guys, so. Okay. So <laughs> show us if you can, because uh, you're like just slightly out of frame. Um, what the? There yeah. Okay. So they're they're just so that's it. They're just like really. Those are smaller than I. Are there going to be like more than one square involved in each dumpling, or what's? No, they're just really this small. They're just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? They're, they're like they're like they're this big. Oh, oh wow. they're like yeah. bite sized. That's the They are. This is going to be a very long folding process. <laughs> <laughs> we may be here for a while. You're, you're missing those five thing. siblings now. What? <laughs> you're missing those five siblings now. It was anyway. <laughs> my, not to like bring the tone down, but one of, my, one of my sisters just had a baby in September. Aww. And I've seen the baby twice Aww. since then. Yeah. Meaning my niece has no idea what my face looks like because I'm always seeing her with a mask on. Aww. So, yeah, I was missing them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a one inch by one inch square. Maybe. One and a half inch, but I, I, some of them are a little bigger because I do not have the patience to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have a, do you have a, a rough estimate how many, how many dumplings there are going to be? I don't. Um, <laughs> I think it's just however many there ends up being. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, there. kind of how I cook anyway. So. How long is a piece of string? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Hello. I'm gonna bring uh, Dave back. Hello, and ask you about uh, hey. so how does that? Hey, what is the? So you're trying to you're like trying to push things forward. What does what does that involve in a in a nutshell these days? Like what is that? What's the goal? Is it like web series? Is it uh, TV? Like I have no idea how the industry works right now. Like what sort of what are what are the next steps for you? Well, uh, so like people pitch things on paper, like a one, like a one pager kind of thing where they just describe the idea, but they have nothing else. Um, but I think, 
And this is my perception. I mean, by by no means am, am I the definitive expert on this, but uh, I think most of the time these days, people want to see a fully fledged like script, like something mm-hmm. that's been through some revisions and uh, is not like a, a you know what we call a barf draft, like the bleh, like the the first version, something <laughs> fairly refined. Uh, and usually that comes along with what's called a pitch deck, which is sort of a just a marketing package that may describe the characters in a little more detail, the synopsis of the, you know, if it's a feature, then a synopsis of the feature, or if it's a TV series, uh, uh, an idea of what the world is and and where the stories may go. Uh, People do different levels of work, you know, like I read the, read the pitch, the pitch deck for, for the wire and the creator of the wire like had every single beat in every episode of the first wow. just figured out when he pitched it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> People don't do that much work because that's yeah. a lot of work, right? That's that's mm-hmm. the work of a of a writing room over many, many months uh to figure out all, all of those interconnections and all those story points and stuff. So so you can go in, you know, with everything or you can go in with a page. Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's a big, it's a big, uh, there's a big gap in between things, but, mm-hmm. but ultimately, you know, uh, these days it, it's quite competitive. Uh, like mm-hmm. lots of people are, are trying, like everybody wants to work in TV, I think, uh, in the film mm-hmm. industry ultimately, because it, it's, you know, if you make a, a decent show, it's years of work. Uh, you know, that being right. one of the primary motivations is having a job. But they- <laughs> <laughs> actually pay yourself to be a filmmaker um and uh you know and it pays well because they're all union positions and, and mm-hmm. the unions over the many years have uh, negotiated good rates of pay for people to be on set so, uh, so it's, you know like a lot of people want to do it right mm-hmm. um so but there's also a lot more places uh to make stuff than there used to be right yeah so, like if you think like 20 years ago in Canada, it would have been CBC, CTV, and t- TELUS maybe, you know. Uh, and now there's all the streaming channels in the States. There's all the, the cable channels uh, in Canada as well. So the budgets, you know, vary greatly uh, between these different applications. But um, but yeah, so ultimately what we're doing is we're putting you know, the story together is as succinctly and, and interestingly as we possibly can. Uh, and then trying to, 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 to team with with people who may have things that we don't, like connections to Netflix, you know, like right, ne- right. You know, Netflix uh, is, is, on, is a bit of the ivory tower in some ways right. in the film world, right? If you have a, a connection to one of the um, one of the buyers at Netflix, uh, it's something that you, you tend to covet you know, you're not like handing out that person's e- like contact <laughs> to everybody because uh, it's hard because you don't, you know, they don't take unsolicited things. So you have to right. know somebody or you have mm-hmm. to have an agent uh, who's actually working and, and doing their job and, and pushing your stuff out there. So, it's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, so, you think we're is? looking for like minded people who really believe in the project and, and yeah, who, yeah, have, yeah. who have things that we don't, you know, like I'm more on the creative side of things than than mm-hmm. I am on the on the networking and producing side of things. So mm-hmm. you, need, you think- need all those, you need the business people, you need the creatives and you need them yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's rare to, it, yeah, it's, it's true. One person can't do everything. Do you no. think that with the, the, the like, you're, like you're saying with these, um, there being just more platforms now, more more stuff going on, is it easier for people who to like break into the industry who maybe like aren't rich uh you know aren't the usual suspects or is it like is it is there more room for diversity or what do you think <laughs> i don't know i don't know it's a that's a that's a loaded question in canada yeah i think yeah. a couple of our biggest exports had you know the children of of famous canadian people yeah. who either made them or star in them so, a lot of people with famous last names yeah <laughs> Yeah, so our whole families in the show together, you know. So I don't know. Like I, I don't know if it's, I don't, know, I don't know if it's easier uh, now. Uh, but certainly, there's more, there's more places to pitch things, and there's more budget ranges of things. You know, like Canada mm-hmm. makes a lot more than a couple of shows a year now. You know, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, but it's still pretty limiting because I mean, CBC always wants some kind of a regional 
cultural tie-in of some sort. And CTV, if it isn't a police procedural, it's probably not going to get made, you know, because <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> ultimately they're, they're, they're making stuff that they have to be able to sell ads right. for. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. So in Canada, it's still it's still pretty small, right? Like we're a country. Of, I don't know how many million are we now? Like thirty-seven or something. I don't even know. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I also think we're, we're like ten percent of America. Is what yeah. 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 No. We're like the same landmass. <laughs> Yes, yeah. So there's just it's not that it's not so big of an industry that there's mm -hmm. just like endless numbers of shows that are being made in Canada. And most of them are reality shows. Like, you know, when you look at the quantity of shows being made, uh, drama is a lot smaller and the budgets for Canadian mm -hmm. dramas are a lot smaller than they are. Right, right. Yeah. Right? Which is why I think most Canadian filmmakers who want to be making T V stuff are, are trying to to get that pitch session with Netflix or Hulu or, or Amazon or whatever, or whatever the case may be. Right. So, so I'm going to show it just because, I think, much bigger. Yeah. just because I think it's, uh, um, uploading, uploading. So I, 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 you, you made a movie, you did make an indie movie and I love the poster. Yeah, the poster's <laughs> really cool. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good and it took me the first time it took me a minute to realize she has like lego pieces in her hair <laughs> yes yeah <it's> real. yeah <laughs> it happens <laughs> yeah i made that just before i became a parent so it, it really <laughs> it makes much more sense to me now <laughs> I you, yeah it was a couple of uh, local hamilton artists who, who made the part who made the poster yeah jackie mm -hmm. and uh, her partner uh, uh, Jamie Lawson, uh, they, they run a little design studio together. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. Book. So it's a very different genre from the other stuff that you've done. <laughs> it's yeah, like a, no, it wasn't. I mean, like, a working mom. <laughs> yes, yeah, I didn't. I didn't write that one. That was uh, my my good friend and yeah. uh, co-creator on that one, Sarah. But Sarah Kapoor, that was that was her baby. So I, I co-directed it with her. And then uh, and she wrote it, and her family stars in it, right? Like yes. her son, her daughter, her mom's in it. Her mom actually steals the show. <laughs> like she's, her mom is hilarious. Yeah, I just yeah. watched it recently. I, I watched it last week because I wanted to <laughs> be able right. to yeah, yeah, yeah. know what I was talking about when I was yeah. talking to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how did you watch it? Yeah. How did you watch it? Oh, uh, it's on Canopy. If you are in, uh, mm -hmm. if you're in Toronto, it's it's on. Uh, you can Canopy is like a. a, a online streaming library. service that you have yeah that you have access to through the library uh i know uh, toronto public library oh, has it yeah. Mm -hmm. okay yeah cool. so if you if you go in toronto public library the website and search canopy with a k you'll get canopy which is awesome by the way they have like a lot of really cool indie movies um and uh the bad mother is on there so okay <laughs> I think it's still on Holly. I think if you have Rod, like I've heard of people across the country watching it on TV somehow. So I think oh. if your cable package has Hollywood Sweets uh, involved, okay. and Hollywood Sweets uh, plays it in rotation fairly often. So it's on, oh, interesting. on there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah, go for so it. You so you live in Hamilton. Yes. And so did you used to live in Toronto and then you moved to Hamilton? No. No? Okay. <laughs> yes, no, I, I mean, there's so many, like so many creative, else, yeah. no, there's so many yeah. creative people from Toronto who in the past 10 years have moved to Hamilton. Yeah. Right? Those people wanted to own their houses, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's been the primary driving factor. Yeah. yeah, for the Americans even, watching even Hamilton, say, even say, like it's still it's not cheap to buy in Hamilton anymore, but it's still half the yeah. price of Toronto. Like, yeah, you can get a house in somewhere around here for about six fifty, and that's slightly half of what the average price of a house in Toronto. Yeah. Is. So, for yeah. for the Americans and including Garrett, Hamilton has been <laughs> has been compared to like Hamilton to, to Toronto is kind of like what Brooklyn is to New York City, um, or to to Manhattan. It's, <laughs> it's, Maybe. <laughs> I've heard this many times. My wife used to live in Brooklyn, and I spent a lot of time there. And it's very, it's very, very different. But yeah, but, uh, yeah. If you're I mean, for the big I just, analogy, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's like the analogy is more about like the relationship between the two. I, I yeah. guess, it's, it, and you know, it's 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 that it's sort of it's Hamilton is more of like a, a smaller like Rust Belt city that is really only about like an hour's drive away from Toronto, but um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but that's a, it's a, was <laughs> at least ten years ago a little bit more affordable than Toronto. And yeah, a lot of a lot of creative people have moved out there, and they they have this awesome thing. I actually I'm I'm one of the things I'm I'm bummed about missing these days is not being able to go to Hamilton and go to the James Street Art Crawl, which is this this awesome thing that they have on a monthly basis where artists come out and and like hang out in the street <laughs> and put up tables and booths well um, and when yeah, I, I grew up in great. Brantford so Hamilton was the big city Brantford. I grew up I, I spent many formative years in Brantford too oh really yeah Walter Street uh yeah. do you know Walter Street yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, then, then, and then we would we would say that we were like going to the movies and we would go to Hamilton yeah. and, <laughs> and go to bars <laughs> <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was the big city. <laughs> I, I've done the reverse thing. I've rid, I've ridden my bike along the rail trail to Brantford, uh, and then rewarded myself with with a couple of pints and a lamb burger at a local bar there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then ridden back because back is kind of like almost all downhill. So oh, you know, nice. <laughs> you just kind of have a couple of beers and be like, Woo, just like kind of glide okay. home. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pulling dumplings now. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm gonna, we should watch that. And, yeah, I'm gonna try and <laughs> zoom in on this. Here we go. Yes, let's let's see this. What's happening? Because they're they're an interesting shape. They're like open top I mean, dumplings. These yeah. Are, oh, oh, these are my little. Aww. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm cutting the meatballs, the frozen meatballs, in half. Yes, those They're actually look street. like a photo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it look like a photo. Yeah. 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 The, I didn't understand what you meant by open face, but yeah, that, that's really cool. They're open like yeah. That. yeah. They're little, yeah, really specific little canoe little... shapes. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. 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 So cute. They're actually <laughs> kind of easier to make than like closed ones. You don't have, there's, it's more. Yeah. There's no complicated like folding process. They're just. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm getting very hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> so and the step like i we, we were talking about this earlier that it's actually it's a two-stage cooking process so what are the two stages first in a grease pan it seems yes you gotta butter your pan um and then you bake them for mm -hmm. or dot them with butter and bake them for about 40 minutes i think and then um pour stock into the pan and then they cook in that like pot stickers for a while oh, mm. yeah. say, this year i got an instant pot and i've been making my own chicken bone broth so i'm gonna cook, cook it in bone broth which i'm excited about oh amazing <laughs> instant, anyone else instant pot out there it changed my yes life. i love them <laughs> i love it i have one but it stresses me out so much to use it <laughs> It really it did the first time. It's so safe. It's it even what stresses you about it? Um, oh well, I just have like anxiety anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Fairly severe anxiety. So it's totally irrational. But like reading the owner's manual and all the warnings, I was like, oh my god, I'm oh, cooking no. with a literal bomb. Never read all the warnings. <laughs> I'm very afraid. I was very afraid, but it's. It's a pot <laughs> yeah, pothead. <laughs> That's awesome. I have used it twice, and it was very handy. But both times, I was like, I was so stressed, I had to walk out of the kitchen and go as far away from it as I could because I just couldn't handle being in the same room as it. That's even better in pot, as you can walk far away from it, and it just does everything for you. But, yeah. but they're a lot safer than pressure cookers, right? Oh, yeah. safer. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's all, it's all like it's it's a smart. It's like a smart pressure it's cooker. So like smart. It's, yeah, yeah. Like, like it's on it, it'll it'll shut right down if anything yeah. is going wrong with it. So yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I used to be terrified of pressure cookers. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The old school pressure cookers are scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen the picture of um? A uh, pot, a pressure cooker pot, lodged into an apartment ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. No, it definitely had mine for like a week or two before I used it, and the manual I think made it worse. Like I'd say, think less when you use it. Just hmm. oh no, all my squares are sticking together. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I see. It's all like. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'm hoping mine don't, but I know they're going to. (laughs) (laughs) Time, there's time, there's moisture. That's great. I do enjoy it. Origami with dough. (laughs) And so it's not origami because I'm capable of doing it. So (laughs) So those are baked? Yes. Baked and then kind of poached, yeah. Kind of like oven poached. Nice. I want to put mine on this. I'm really okay. I need to say, as someone again living alone, just watching Jared do a thing and doing the same thing is mm-hmm. really doing nice things to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> this is so soothing. It's so yeah. soothing. It feels really nice. And then you get to eat it. It's like sculpture, but you get to eat it. Yes. Mom. <laughs> The last thing I did that was kind of like this, I've been baking a lot of bread too um, and experimenting with like what I can do with the bread dough. And I've been making uh, like stuffed buns because I realized that like, if I I had a choice of what to eat, I like, I would usually just want like, what do I really want? Probably I really want a stuffed bun, you know? (laughs) I I really want a bun filled with like cheese and some other delicious things that, you know, that I can just eat. Like who doesn't want a stuffed bun? So I've been, I I made some with like, um, like caramelized onions and cheese and ham or whatever. (laughs) So you're you're nestling yours really close together. They can touch in the pan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think will make them a little difficult to serve, but it's not a big deal because I'm just going to eat them all myself. (laughs) (laughs) They don't have to look pretty. Yeah, that's the thing. This is also the kind of thing where even if it completely falls apart, then you basically have like a pan of pasta and seasoned beef, which is not a problem. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. What are you, have you guys, what, what, what? Uh, cooking and eating habits have you guys fallen into during the pandemic? <laughs> other than other than bread baking, is there anything else that you didn't really do before that you've started doing? Yeah. Takeout. I just <laughs> used to do takeout, and now <laughs> because because America cannot get its shit together at all, um, <laughs> the only way to keep restaurants alive near yeah. me is yeah. to go eat there. So. I have discovered all these places near me that I'd never been or only been like once and just didn't go back. Cause I was like, I can make food at home. Um, <laughs> but there's like, there's a Thai restaurant near me that makes this crispy garlic chicken that is oh like, to die for, or there's <laughs> um, Indian places nearby that I'd never been got, you know, got salmon curry or whatever. And it's just, oh, it's awesome. been really good in that regard, even though, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just learning about my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. The foods. I yeah. had egg, uh, eggplant fry. There's an Indian place near me that has eggplant french fries, like deep fried. Oh, wow. Like <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Wow, that sounds amazing. It was, I, uh, what's it? Are they really gooey in the middle? Yeah. <laughs> dip them in something. I'm trancing out just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a there's a restaurant near me that is um, like French and um, New Orleans cuisine, and they do brunch, and oh. they do all these different eggs benedicts. And one of them has um, the eggs benedict comes with like the egg and the hollandaise and whatever. But then under the egg is a slice of a duck and pistachio terrine. What? And wow! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so with, with the oh sorry I was just gonna say with with the pandemic I've been uh, I've been cooking a lot more mm-hmm. but then also doing strategic takeout to make sure that the restaurants in my neighborhood stay yes, alive. Yes. So <laughs> we're supporting. There's a Vietnamese place near us called Foking Fabulous, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's it's authentic that. Vietnamese food. It's really good. So we've been ordering from them. And then our local pub food, um, we've been trying to order from them instead of from Wing Machine. Um, And yeah, a couple, oh, uh, there's another place called the Mad Radish. I've been trying to get some, and again, like I'm probably ordering more food than I would normally because I want, I'm just thinking, what do I want to still be here when this is all over? And so I'm choosing those things. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, no, no Popeyes, no. (laughs) 
Yeah. Some people in my house love like Popeyes and McDonald's and stuff like that. And I'm like, <laughs> some Let's... people in your house, <laughs> it's like <laughs> the teenage boy that you live with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's just it, like, I, like to order, to use the amount of our budget that we can use for ordering to order strategically to help our local restaurants has been, yeah. And then the other thing that I did was I got really into these cooking videos of where like eat for five days on $30 and like these extreme Ooh. sort of budget things. But I gained a bunch of weight doing it because mm. <laughs> it's, it's all like extreme budgeting. So it's high calorie <laughs> cheap food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, right. I dial yeah. that back. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone the opposite in terms of food. Like I, I just like don't even look at what things cost. I'm like, I, there's <laughs> nothing fun. So if I want these, dollars, <laughs> I get these dollars. If I want this, if I want that, like I have my food bill has like probably tripled since the pandemic mm -hmm. because it's like I don't fucking. Uh, yeah. like, there's <laughs> nothing else to do but try all these fancy foods. Like. Yeah. Nice. Well, buying like pate from like local organic butchers and you know all of these things i normally would let myself it, and it really seems like food prices have gone up regardless yeah, of yeah. Whether yeah. You're yeah. Trying uh -huh. fancy stuff or not like it's yeah. just mm -hmm. basics, like seem to cost like quite a bit more than they did a couple of years yep. ago yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. they have it, yeah I used to go to a grocery store and it's like, no matter what I bought, it would just be $60. And now it's like 90. It's like, yeah. what? You're like, how? Yeah. Like, like, dog hockey? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, it's like, be a lot of pocky, I guess, but yeah. It's like the, the, the millennials being shamed for the avocado toast. If you didn't buy the pocky, you could, <laughs> you could afford a, I don't know, second car. <laughs> that's how much, that's how much pocky costs. It adds up, you know. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, but yeah. everything everything is more. I bought a it I is, bought an yeah. English cucumber today for two two dollars and fifty cents. Right. Which yeah. I thought used to be true. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's weird. I mean yeah. it's yeah. winter yeah. still. Yeah. Farmers are actually getting paid and farm workers are actually getting paid what they should be. <laughs> like I think <laughs> a lot of right. unlikely. Unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah also right. paying more. I feel like in many yeah. ways we've been paying too little for a lot of yeah. things. That's it. Like, yeah, if I knew that the money was actually going to the people who, you know, at the, <laughs> who were at the beginning yeah, of the food chain in that. terms of making it. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but no. Yeah. Yeah. I've kind of been, I've, I've, I'm still in kind of like survivalist food buying mode where I used to, I don't actually, I try to make an effort every now and then, but I don't shop at Kensington market, which I'm close to, which is a lot of like little indie um, grocery <laughs> stores as much as I used to. Instead, I like. I get like the the big discount supermarket chain flyer and pour over it like my 86 year old dad, which is like, <laughs> very joy of life, like looking at the grocery flyer every year, every 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 week and figuring out what he wants. But I like figure it out and then I like go because I can go in and get like everything that I want in one place in like 20, 30 minutes and then get out again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So and I, I have to do another like targeted strike tomorrow morning. And I also like try and go really early in the morning. So yeah, I that's what I do. breathed in a whole lot. So <laughs> what grocery store do you like, Nadia? Where do you do that? Well, I'm actually I'm near um a Freshco, which I know like some Kensington market Kensingtonians will be like, the Freshco, because it, it, yeah. it's like a, a big discount supermarket big box that opened um sort of on the the outskirts of the of the neighborhood but right. it's pretty good honestly they have like they have a lot of um like international foods they have it's, yeah. it's almost like going to scarborough is that where the kramer radio used to be on bathurst or is that yeah of... yeah it's oh, right. okay. Mm -hmm. all right okay mm -hmm. cool all right. <laughs> um yeah no i i <laughs> Because as a psychotherapist, um, my I have too many clients. Like I have been working nonstop through this right. whole thing. Oh yeah. Super <laughs> up. So um, why not? Like I need all the cheese just to handle. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, <laughs> the program and how to do psychotherapy during a pandemic. It's been very mm -hmm. confusing. But um, anyway, I've also gone like more higher end. I've been like ordering from like some kind of organic growth like fresh city farms and it's all pretty expensive but that's when i thought this wasn't gonna last long i'm like yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> i will buy all right. the fancy things and now just listening to you guys i'm like this i should probably start scaling this <laughs> <laughs> i could be saving money right now like maybe i should think about that so 
<laughs> yeah, noticing choices according to like how long it is I think I'm gonna be doing this. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, 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 it's true. You gotta pace yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. of, of, I've zoom, zoomed in on you because that reminded me I wanted to ask you, what do you, as as, as a psychotherapist, Where's will you my... make your, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pretty. Sorry, what were you asking? I was just gonna say, as as a psychotherapist, do you have uh like <laughs> what is your what is your you people must ask you this a lot. So what do you have like any advice that you've been giving to people for getting through this winter? <laughs> yeah. Be fucking nice to yourself. Fuck the cheese. We love this, I swear a lot. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you're in good company, don't worry. Yeah. Just stop, like, just stop criticizing yourself. And yeah, yeah. Yourself, <laughs> I mean, and I got to say that to myself, too. I think, like, mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of self-criticism and, like, pushing ourselves that we can do when there's a lot of other buffers. Like, yeah. but there's no buffers. Like, I think people don't realize how much, like, the little, hey, how you doing between the meetings actually buffers. And, like, yeah, yeah. Just get on and, like, having someone politely make room for you, like, to get on the streetcar. Like, there's all these little tweaks of humanity mm. and connection we're not getting. Um, so I think we have to be really hardcore nice to ourselves right now. And like, yeah, this, this is hard. I don't like this. It makes sense that I'm sad and like a yeah. lot of clients are just being like, I don't know why. I just can't get it together. I'm like, I know why. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> so at the same yeah. time, mm -hmm. like really nice yourself and a little bit more disciplined probably than you had to be. So mm -hmm. like I'm like really kind if you're slow and sad and out of it, like be like, oh buddy, I you know, like it makes sense that you're feeling this way. At the same time. I'm noticing people do better if they're a little more strict on their schedule, like really force themselves to go for a walk, even if they don't want to go for a walk, like really like call that friend, even if they don't really feel like it, like almost don't trust your feelings. You're probably not going right. to want to do anything right now. So mm -hmm. I've been really like, I have to wake up and be like, it'd be two hours I'm doing this and then I'm doing this and then I'm doing this and I have to keep going back to that list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's not a lot that motivates you to do anything. So yeah, yeah, like, that's a really good point. Lots yeah. of self kindness, but also a little bit more probably discipline yeah. than you normally need to have. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point because I also I, I've been definitely been falling into the trap of yeah, don't really feel like doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't feel good. Like it doesn't help you feel like you're happy at all. Like it's hard to. Mm -hmm. yeah, just, mm -hmm. I was doing that too and noticing I was getting really despondent in a way that wasn't productive anymore. Yeah. I think I'm also like so so edgy, you know, like lately. And I, I, mm. I like I, I can have a little bit of edge, but I mean this is like <laughs> yeah. a lot of edge. And yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, I, I was yeah. a, I went to go just grab some windshield wiper fluid and I forgot my mask. So I went back to my car and I got my mask and someone had gotten in there before me and was buying like every lottery ticket with oh. possible <laughs> permutation of, of like like encore this or whatever it just like and of course like the poor attendant yeah. wasn't getting it right because he was yeah. talking really fast and had like 1800 like like little yeah you know, like specifications for it and it was taking forever and i'm just like i'm literally like this like, <laughs> 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 and I'm like, whoa, like, I'm gonna get in a fight here, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's like $5, right? Like, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's those moments where you see it, you know, where you yeah. see the, oh, because yeah. every day I wake up, I'm like, eh, you know, whatever, like, it's okay. Things are, things are all right, you know? And then, then you realize in these little moments where, it flares up and you're just like, wow, like <laughs> calm down, you know? Like, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. the, the way that I explained it, I have a 24 year old daughter as well. And the way that I sort of explained it to her, because same thing, she's finding that she's flaring more. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. said like, right now the pandemic is making us run this constant program in our yeah. brains yeah. of safety and social distancing and hygiene and like we're constantly running this program that we didn't used to run yeah. 
And then on top of that, we don't have the same goals and rewards that we used to have, right? Mm -hmm. Like you used to have a goal where, you know what, I'm going to work really hard and then I'm going to go to a party with my friends or I'm going to work really hard and then we're going to go to Hawaii. Not that we go to Hawaii, but you know, some people do, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like all those sorts of normal things that used to be able to help us get through things. Plus that low level computer program that we're running of safe, like nonstop actual safety that we didn't used to have to run. And so, so yeah, our brains are tired, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. And so they're not working as well as they, as they <laughs> once did. And we have to, you know, like, like Megan said, we have to <clears throat> be caught, like forgive ourselves. Right. Mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. we do have that like zero day or that, freak out at the you know lottery store (laughs) you know like it just we have to forgive ourselves because our brain I think I really do think that we're gonna see you know and maybe Megan's reading stuff about this too but I think we're gonna see a real mental health crisis um as even as we come out of it right with some people even having as much like like you know not to be a downer but some people having PTSD some people mm-hmm. having, you know, really lost their social connections in a yeah, huge yeah. way. And and I think we just have to remember that even though we kind of pretend that we're going along normally, we're in no way are we, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I keep finding I'll be like really happy for a while, like something I'm enjoying something, something's going well, and then later I'll feel really odd, and then I'll kind of remember what's happening again, and then I'm like, oh. you know, like it's just amazing. like the first month or two, I was just kind of like stressed all the time, but yeah. now my brain is like acclimatized enough that I can have these yeah. moments of enjoyment and whatever, um, and going back and forth. But the other thing I've been trying to really remember is like we're we've gone through terrible things, <laughs> like, yeah. like there is some trauma, but like it's also like we're okay, and, mm-hmm. and, and we and we often people are going through really hard things all the time, and so sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like I'm off pre pandemic, I was often in a bad mood, like I can't blame everything <laughs> on the pandemic, yeah. <laughs> like, I also have had hard times that were hard, so I think it's a balance of like really taking this seriously. But then also placing ourselves in the span of human history, which uh-huh. is like wars and famine and blah, and you know, and like all of these things are always both are. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. And it's not. It's it's also it's not just like oh, you know, our grandparents survived World War Two. We can do this. But it's it's also that you it, it, it's it's not like oh, this is nothing compared to we should feel bad about. No, like, exactly. It's, like, it's more that like humans can do this. Like yeah, <laughs> exactly. humans are known for being able to get through this kind of thing, and you know we can. And there may be some super skills we learned that we didn't have, right? Like I mm-hmm. didn't know I could spend so much time by myself and like it. Like that's actually yeah. a thing. <laughs> I'm actually excited to know that I. Can do that right like, mm-hmm. like, I think I don't know I think that we're going to be hurt by this in some ways and we're going to have grown and I mean David's going to have stuff. bread for the <laughs> I feel like you can see the psychological damage that's happening to our society in in terms mm-hmm. of like the how many people have drifted towards conspiracy theories yes. yeah that, you know it's like if you look at it you know mm-hmm. with any amount of rationality it's just like what are you talking about yeah right? yeah We're- so pizza parlors, like, mm-hmm. it's just, like everything is just like, totally like what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, and then there's all these people who are out there holding signs, you know, like, and and just like, and actually going out there and just like, and they're convinced, they're convinced that yeah. this is this is the reality now, you know. And it's an like, easier reality for them, right? Like, it's easier. Uh, so I, no. I actually follow, Nadia might know this. I actually I was gonna, follow, yeah. <laughs> I follow them on social media. Who, sir? Um, I follow the anti-maskers and the conspiracy. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. So, so I watch them on I watched, social media. I'm glad that you're the live it. stream of their marches. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty heavy into it as a hobby. And, um, <laughs> and there, it's so interesting. They... It is just so hard for them to not think that there's a grander plan. Like, it's just so hard for them to imagine that a random virus came and shut the world down. That's just impossible Mm -hmm. for them to think. So for them, there has to be a plan. And for Mm -hmm. there to be a plan, there has to be good versus evil, 
-hmm. And the good has to be them and evil has to be the government who's telling them to take away their freedom. Mm -hmm. And it's just such, and it, but it really is a way that they, that they, they, it's almost like they're using it to explain this really difficult thing to understand to themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it's also like, it's a way that like a lot of them feel very powerless. Like my life has changed, but my job's, like my job is the same. My family's the same. Whereas for other people, they've lost so much. Yeah, and for yeah. them to have an enemy and for them to have an answer that this bad thing happened because Bill Gates wants to depopulate the world with a vaccine. Like it's, it's yeah. really involved. Oh, no. and, and it's, it's really interesting though, because they find comfort in it. They really do find comfort in it. Yeah, it, 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 we've seen quite a bit of it here in Hamilton. Like uh, it, a part of the reason that 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 uh, neo-Nazi killer robot suit idea came into my head was because uh, in 2019, our, our pride, and actually in 2018 too, but in 2019 it was a much bigger kerfuffle. Our pride festival was attacked by this weird, oh, yeah. weird combination of people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like from religious, like really super, super duper Christian religious zealots, uh, like on the homophobic end of things. Uh, and then like national party members who are, who yep. are basically an open neo-Nazi party. And we, we have Canada's lead neo-Nazi living here in Hamilton. He, he, uh, he runs for mayor every, every election cycle. Uh, his name's Paul Fromm. Uh, oh. don't, don't Google him. Um, he's one of the fancy but, masker guys, but it's all morphed into anti masking now, yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Like, too, though, like, 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 in the summer of 2019, we were out at, at our Hamilton City Hall, like counter protesting the anti fascists for all these, you know, like all of the, the church groups and synagogue, everybody coming together and being like, fuck off, you know, in a nicer way than that. But, um, <laughs> and then the same people have now morphed into the, like, yeah. they're called hugs yeah. over masks or something. Hugs over masks, yeah. yes. And, like, other, there's a Project Phoenix, there's a couple of other ones, and they've all sort of, like, morphed into this these white supremacist groups, you know? Yep. Um, yep. And so the, to see those things coming together and just all of the the sort of like out there kind of conspiracy theories like yeah. combining together into like a common front uh it's actually it's like it's really quite concerning right and, mm. and Addy, i i know that like they marched past your apartment like, they marched past really my apartment because i'm near i live near enough the um <laughs> uh, to the provincial legislature that's and they they have like a, a weekly thing where they they like collect there at on saturdays and yeah. they go past my apartment and they have like boom boxes and and flags with disturbing symbols on them that Rebecca would probably know what they what they are <laughs> it's just, mm -hmm. and it's and a lot of american flags too it's like what is what is that you know well, they're, they're very cuz you know like david said there's it, it's mm -hmm. this weird group of people who have come together so it's this really christian fundamentalist type people and then these super right wing racist homophobic people and then these sort of American or sorry, Canadian Republicans who fell for mm. the whole Trump QAnon, right. yeah, that yeah. whole belief. And mm -hmm. they've all come together in this horrible soup of um, the pandemic is a hoax and our freedoms are being taken away and Trudeau is Castro's son and they're going to put us on. <laughs> I'd it, forgotten about that one. He kind of looks like him though, doesn't he? I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not more... decided on that one personally. <laughs> <laughs> when, I don't know. So I want to say I think it's important though too. Like I think sometimes also like I, I do think it's distressing, but I also think like part of it is also a pushback against what we're doing right now, which yeah, is yeah. elite liberals making fun of those <laughs> ideas. So I just want to put that in too, like to take. <laughs> I just read a beautiful article by Rachel Cusk on, on mm. business, and I thought she did a really good job talking both about Trump and Brexit, and then her place as like, sort of like a liberal 
um, educated person. And so like, I think the splits are much more complicated. And anyway, I just want to put that I just feeling a, there's a lot of there's a lot of highly educated people winding up in this as well, though, like there's a lot of wealthy, highly educated, I flew into Washington, DC on my private plane to attend. Sure. The yeah, <laughs> well, I think it crosses past class. But they also mm -hmm. when I say elite, I actually more mean academic, <laughs> like elite, <laughs> and, like certain ways, and, and people feeling disenfranchised from those mm. places. And like, so I think a lot of the paranoia about power is like, I think a lot of it is actually a paranoia about power in general. And mm. um, uh, I think it's also a lot of white people feeling like they're losing power. Yeah, right? yeah. I think it's a lot of that. I think it's a lot of, um, so there's a lot of not white people who voted for Trump in America as well. I'm I mean, talking about the people in the, in the movements that I'm following. Okay. They, they are, those marches that go past Nadia's house yeah. are 98% white, mostly men yeah. from who, who don't like immigrants, who don't like gay people. Who, <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I'm not like with it. I just anyway, I think like, <laughs> my own like I just I don't know. <laughs> like maybe it's just my own his like yeah. I, anyway, I just wanted to put that view in <laughs> that when it I'm gets trying to look for the look for the look for the psychological drivers behind this yeah maybe. yeah Yay! <laughs> oh my god yeah can we hold on jared jared come back yeah <laughs> I, I didn't i wasn't quick enough on the draw with the hold on i want to i want to like feature those look at that oh, wow. oh my god. And they have been dotted with butter and now they're going in the oven they are a thing of beauty jared, um, I you, so i put mine in the oven but of course i put <laughs> frozen pre-cooked turkey meatballs in mine. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's set for 40 to 50 minutes, the first run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but what do you think, like for the actual dough part, like do you think I should still keep it at the same length of time with frozen <laughs> meatballs in it? Or do you think it's shorter? I guess I can just check. I think it. probably same length of time, but check it sooner. Okay. Um, just because the dough is still going to cook at the same right. rate, I think. So mm -hmm. So what is the, is, is it 40 minutes for, sorry, for the first bake? Okay. So we're not going to, sadly, we are not going to see, Jared, your face is like a little bit too high. In the I know. Frame, I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I had moved the computer so you could see. Oh, the, there we go. Okay. So, that's better. So then yeah. when you pour the broth in, then how long does it cook with the broth? It's um, <laughs> 10 minutes longer. Oh, okay. So like not much longer. It just sort of moistens them up. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Just thinking it was like a little bit and get all crispy. So I wanted, and I wanted to, um, all of the, the discussion of, of the general atmosphere of, of people leaving strange things uh it was I, I had been thinking dave this is a really odd time to be writing like dystopian yeah. fiction because it's like everything you write just kind of like gets it's yeah, a black it's, mirror yeah. thing where like it's today's really episode is anymore, it's just reality right like, exactly. <laughs> yeah like it's just we live yeah. in such strange times it's like how do you even like keep, stay ahead of them so i, I did want to ask you like i mean i i i, I don't want to ask you how do you get your ideas? But <laughs> because I know that's annoying. But um, I but with, with horror, I'm always interested in like what what scares you and how do you how do you sort of like what 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 turns out to be an an idea that's interesting that's interesting enough to follow up with. And how much of your process is like collaborative with other people? Like, and how does that work? Uh, yeah, a couple of questions in there. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm a little rusty. Like um, <laughs> yeah, I think most of what I do now is collaborative because I think um, after I wrote the the pilot screenplay for the meld concept that I was working on, I just realized that I'm much too slow of a writer uh, to make this efficient enough to get anything made. Right? Like you can't spend years on something. Yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta have you gotta have more things. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's also just come from meeting more people uh, and realizing that the companies that tend to be successful at this tend to have uh, multiple things that they're pitching at the same time, not like one, but like 10. Uh, so I don't have 10 things, I have three things, but that's three more things than I had a couple of years ago. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of, I'm slow 
quickly kind of building uh, sort of a network of people that I that I like to work with uh, and who who do things better than I do. Like I can write okay, but there's much better writers out there. So am I going to spend my time trying to become a great writer, or am I going to find a great writer and just you know get this thing done? <laughs> Um, so it, it's just sort of that, and that, that's um, that's all kind of next level for me, right? Like it's just making, just accepting that you can't, you're not ever going to be good at everything, you know, and you mm -hmm. really have to find the people who are good at those things uh, and work with them, you know, and focus on focus on less. Because I, I think with indie filmmaking, it, it's like it is sort of forced by necessity to be doing everything, you know, on some. Mm -hmm. level, like, like, you know, when I'm on one of these small film sets, I'm wearing like eight different hats, you know? Uh, and you can do that for like a small project, but on a bigger one, it's not really possible and you're not gonna get the results that you really want to get. So mm -hmm. uh, so it is very much, I think, uh, like, you know, you have to leverage sort of like what you've already done and, and find people who are willing to work with you to get something bigger than, than you've done before done. Mm -hmm. and, kind of pushing it forward like that yeah um and i forgot what the other part of the question was <laughs> Sorry, I, I i asked you like a long rambling question and it, monroe in the comments has asked a relevant question as well uh i've been recently dealing with jim is also by the way an, an indie filmmaker who does like oh. sci-fi dystopian horror stuff uh i've been dealing with surprising amounts of overwhelm from the different projects i have where i find they usually just keep me pleasantly busy anyone else dealing specifically with overwhelm so David sounded like a little bit like you were. I like overwhelm is is definitely. I don't even have that much to do. I'm always <laughs> thinking of the like being kind to yourself thing. I, I frequently am like, why am I overwhelmed? I don't have. I hardly have anything to do. Like what? Yeah. What is, what is this? <laughs> it's fun. I don't know that I need to answer this. I mean, I I know Jim. We're we're pals and stuff. But, uh, I, you know, like I'm just like. What overwhelms me is is being with a five year old all day, you know. And yeah, I, love, yeah. I love my daughter, I really do, and she's so much fun. We have so much fun together, and we're, it's it's great. But it's also like you know, as an adult, you're trying to you know, you want to do something, you want to focus on it, and mm -hmm. a five year old is the opposite of focus. Whatever the <laughs> word for that in English is, and that's what they are. They're like, you know, you know, you want to be this like the spotlight, but it's just this, like, this, you know, um, they focus on everything, you know, all at yeah, all yeah. at the same time. And it, it's hard, it's hard to just to, 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 to push things, to push things forward when you, when you're, you really like, for me anyway, I mean, other people might be different, but uh, it really saps all of my creative energy being with my daughter all day. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's fun. I mean, like uh, I'm getting something from it, but, but uh, you know, it, it's hard to to push these complex creative projects forward when you've got yeah. this um, when, when school's not on. You know, yeah. But we our entire society is held up by school, basically, yeah. right? Like taking care of our kids for yeah. us, so that we could do other things. Right? <laughs> when that doesn't happen, it's just like, oh my god, right? Well, like, it's like, part of your brain, I would assume. Like, right. I mean, it's such a different part of your brain, like that expansive kid, be aware, is like so different than the parts of your brain you probably use for work, right? So yeah, they're very lateral, like they're just yeah. like, they're just like it's a, you know, like they're they're all, they're extremely creative, like, so it's great that way, but it's, yeah. you know, it's, not it's tiring too, it's very tiring, you know? So my strategy has mostly been like, let's do remote school for an hour in the morning where the actual learning happens and then try and spend as much time outside as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Having gone to conservation areas and having campfires and roasting s'mores and going oh, through hikes yeah. and just trying to be outside as much as possible and just reduce the amount of stuff that I have to plan and like, because I, like, I'm sorry, my wife's going to see this. I hate crafting. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I just, I hate, I hate it. And it's like, why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? Like, that's great. I'm going to go outside. And we're going to go walk around in the woods. Exactly. <laughs> we're going in the woods. Because that's what, that's when you're my energy level is at. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah. I actually so, think kids like that kind of movement, too. Sorry. It was yeah. Jim says exactly. child care is very boring to me. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's boring, but it, for me, but I'm I just like I want to be doing something else, you know. I yeah, really yeah, as, yeah. as an adult, 
I want to be doing <laughs> something else as well yeah, yeah, as the yeah. child care. Mm-hmm. And like school gives you the balance, you know? Because yeah. like during the yeah. part of the day where they need to learn stuff, it's happening. And then you get them and it's like, hey, now it's fun time. Yeah. You, know? it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's easier to do in the way that we've we set up our society. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 we asked you. We asked you those questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I asked you a double barrel question that was yeah. completely open ended. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is, especially little kids are just like all consuming. Like yeah, just, yeah. Can't, they demand all of your attention all the time, and I, I would yeah. find that completely exhausting. I think <laughs> they, <laughs> they have all exactly. of the energy and none of the attention span. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So you can yeah. going outside is probably the smartest thing because like like I like when I used to spend when my kids were little, they're 16 and 24 now, but when they were little, like I would do a craft or whatever, that sort of thing. But it wasn't a pandemic. Like it wasn't, yeah. you know, 11 months of crafts. It was the weekend, yeah. <laughs> right. you know. <laughs> crafts were like a special thing. Now it's like, yeah. oh, I don't want to go out and play with Play-Doh anymore. Let's go outside. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in on Jared for a minute because it looks. Speaking of playing with Play-Doh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> is this yogurt sauce that's happening here? Yes. Yogurt is the Play-Doh of the cow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm making the yogurt garlic sauce. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's See, just Greek yogurt and garlic and a little salt, and then you sprinkle sumac over the whole thing. So. Oh my gosh, I, I should try sumac. Sumac is delicious, and I never buy it's it. It's so good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was a tree. I didn't. I I what didn't know sumac was something I could cook with. Show the show the sumac if you if you I want to see the sumac. It has to like lying red thing. Right? Yeah, I'm just stirring really fast. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Where, yeah, it's, it it's the spice that is. Yeah, really? it's, yeah. it's the the berry of the sumac tree. Oh, um, and it's used a lot in um, like Middle Eastern, Persian, yeah. okay. um, Caucasian, like from the Caucasus, <laughs> not Caucasian. Yeah, <laughs> um, cuisine. <laughs> and what does it taste like? It's sort of a sharp, um, okay. not lemony, but very Dang tart. It. Tangy, zingy, yeah. Okay. It's, if, you uh, it's like, really uh, if you had like um like hummus or or something like that from a a, a Middle Eastern restaurant with a, a like a red sprinkling on it that is tangy, that's that's probably sumac. Ah, okay. Or, or oh. Zatar. Zatar is the other. Sumac in Hamilton. I don't know why it's like a microclimate thing or something, but I see them everywhere. Like the yeah, there's a lot the, around the mountain. Mm. As a Polak, I always assumed the red stuff was uh, paprika. I, I had no idea. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, uh, what yeah. else about your cupboards? Your cupboards, like, like what era is your kitchen? 1960. Yeah. Uh, probably 61. Because my <laughs> building was built to house workers on the World's Fair in Seattle, the same year the Space Needle was Constructed, oh, so it's like sixty-one, perfect. probably. Yeah, yeah. I'm really <laughs> digging the. I really like sixty. Yeah, I'm really digging the all wood, large panel cupboards behind you. It is nice. Yeah, this is the. This is one of the selling points of getting you to do the the cooking show is that you have this real like Julia Child setup with the. Did, yeah. <laughs> you, you can see the Space Needle from your window. <laughs> yeah. Although um, not 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 with your right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I would turn the camera, but that side of the apartment's a mess right now. So, <laughs> so Jared, speaking of overwhelm and and doing lots of things, you I know you have like a, a regular, you have like a day job. You you seem to do a lot of creative things and art things and stuff like that. Like how is that how is that working for you during the pandemic? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Or are you like coping with it by doing a lot of things or <laughs> because you seem very productive creatively who me you, <laughs> you. <laughs> for me you broke up a little bit at the start of that so i was waiting for a name oh, okay. to appear and I, was like, I don't know who you're talking about. um <laughs> no i don't feel overwhelmed um because <laughs> i do have a day job but i also um i have sort of a second job just just like a patreon where i post art and writing and stuff. Oh, so it's like, 
it's a yeah. it's an outlet, but also I make money off of it. <laughs> so what's your day job? Um, I <laughs> I work in an accounting office, um, at the the art college where I got my degree. I just kind of oh, stuck around. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, so <laughs> I get to be exposed to the art world in general, but also have a steady income rather than relying yeah. on <laughs> whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. do you feel that that's, that's helping you stay grounded, but you have, like, you still have this routine? You still have things that you have to do? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is a big, big help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I didn't have to get up at a regular time every day, I would probably just lose my mind entirely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the thing, I guess the thing that's keeping me sane is not the art, but the actual day job. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. They're cooking. Look oh, at that. Ah. A little toasty. Oh. I actually think they might be ready for the broth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably. I mean, it's... Oh, they're, they're like hard. They're like crispy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One time, one time I went to visit my uncle in Ottawa Valley, and he he made me lunch, and he made me um, it was English muffins with cheese whiz and bacon on top, base. and he made me four of them, and he was like, "This was your mom's specialty," and I was like, learning so much. So like learning how to make something like this really is like <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> he was so excited to make me that. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna do the what's the broth what's the broth part now? <laughs> oh, with your with your chicken bone broth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Add chicken bone broth to water to saucepan. Okay, and water. Okay. I'm really bad at reading. It's coming up to we've got like maybe eight minutes left, just sort of letting letting people know. This was not nearly as I was like, how are we gonna fill two hours? And then we <laughs> Uh, I knew I knew you guys would all like bring bring the interesting. So, <laughs> but well, and yeah. it, it it's kind of it, it it's a cool idea. I mean, I've been to a lot of different social sorts of things over the past eleven months, but it's kind of a cool idea to have like a project going on while yeah, we have a conversation. Yeah. And you know, and I, I, it, it was really neat to watch that, and I'm definitely going to try it. I'm definitely going to to do these. Yeah, yeah. I'm worried about my dough because <laughs> of my red, really my rock hard it's red experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. the dough is so easy. You just gotta like mix it okay. until it's a smooth ball. It's not. It's really let it sit. Yeah. Yeah. Jaren, question: Do you think I should just like so for my actual dinner tonight? Do you think I should just bake however many I want in the liquid and then like, like? Then, mm -hmm. then save the rest for tomorrow and then cook them in the liquid? Like, I'm thinking... Probably. I think they would probably get soggy if you cooked yeah, them and then so left yeah, them overnight. Small amount. Okay. Yeah. So so here's a question. How many is one serving? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How many do you want to put in your face in, in one in sitting? Ten! <laughs> I think I'm going to go for one, two, three, four. I think, like, eight... Eight seems reasonable. Yeah. That's four. I cut them in half. So eight is four. Eight is like four um, balls. That seems like a reasonable amount. And I'm going to put it on like a bed of spinach just to make it. Jim is asking whether anyone else in the stream wants to share their website links. Uh, we can do it. Hang on. So, <laughs> Once again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Megaphonic <laughs> FM. Thank you. That's right, Jim. Jim, if you want to pop yours in there, we can we can share yours too. I think Jim, Jim, maybe maybe a guest in a future show if we can coordinate it. But um, I don't what know, about I don't Jared's know art? And we can, I, sorry. What about Jared's art? Oh yeah, Jared. Yeah. Do you want to? I mean, you see, Jared is a regular here, but do you want to? Do you have like like your Twitter or your your website? Um, Probably Twitter because I keep forgetting to update my website. Oh, yeah, yeah, I same, yeah. <laughs> so probably Twitter. I'm um, 
I just have like a psychology. I don't have any room for clients right now, but I am starting like um, I do periodically teach mind like meditation classes. So if people like people just Google my name if they want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jared, how did you come up with your Twitter Twitter handle initially? Oh. <laughs> It was it. Well, it still is my my Tumblr handle as well. I was just like, I got to come up with something funny. What's a fun pun? And then I couldn't think of anything, and somehow ended up with. This. <laughs> I don't know. There's no like. I wasn't a Dracula fan when I came up with it or I anything. Know. I was just like, I don't know. It's a pun. I'm gonna go with it. Okay. And then I read Dracula years later. Steampunk vampire slayer is basically what I'm what I'm getting from your yeah. <laughs> but really it just it just kind of happened. Uh, Jim Jim's was stopped by a bot. <laughs> so, stopped by a bot? Yeah, there is there is a bot that stops people from because there is. Huh. Uh, I'm I'm watching the the chat and there is a bot posting links like want to become famous links uh, and so and then there's a bot. I'm already there. Oh, here we go. We got we got uh, Jim Monroe.net. That is <laughs> got, there's people from the audience now posting there. J- Jim Jim does a lot of cool stuff, uh, and maybe on a future episode, if you want to check check that out. And that's and my friend Hillary. <laughs> oh, put her her link in there as well. And uh, sorry, um, and Megan, what, what's yours again? Oh, I mean, people can just Google Megan Johnson on um, psychology. Okay. To, I just have an ad right now. I just have psychology today. Well, I've been meaning to make a website, but <clears throat> I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Another one of the things that I have. To do. <laughs> that was great. Right. I've right. been meaning to, but I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I, don't want to. Yeah. I don't quite have the skills to do it myself, but I don't quite know what I want enough to like get someone else to do it. Yeah. And I have I to clear space. Honestly. I know. I started. I started the Weebly one. It's but it's yeah. so hard. You have to. Yes, use I use Weebly too, and I. It's it's that's why I haven't updated mine in two years. It's, it's <laughs> easier than Weebly. Mm. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I had like a in Kitchener. I'm from Kitchener, and I had a, a yoga studio there for like ten years, and I really learned how to just hire real like dave said like i just hired people to do stuff that i'm mm-hmm. not gonna and then i went to university in my 30s and i was so confused how i had to do everything i was like this is not how the real world works like i just have to do all of my own work it was very amazing. But anyway. <laughs> oh man great well it's it's 5 58 p.m i think we're just about you the, the dumplings are in the oven i mean we're not gonna we're not gonna see the dumplings to their full conclusion because that would that would just take well, we got a preview with megan's we got a preview with megan's dumplings. yes they look they, they actually are the right shape and they're holding together and, yeah, they, and they turn golden brown and crispy you're on the right track and, now, and we're jealous right those of us that don't have dumplings in the oven are very jealous right now <laughs> you have successfully made us given us dumpling envy yeah <laughs> I do. <laughs> I hope it's dumpling inspiration. So, okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Always with the positive spin, Megan. Always with the positive I'm sorry, spin. Man, it's, uh, <laughs> I can't help it. It's a bad trait of my profession. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna end the it's broadcast. Really nice to meet everyone. Yes, that Everyone's was really so, fun, like, guys. I'm gonna end the broadcast. That won't that won't end the stream, so you guys can stick around for a minute. But wave oh. goodbye to everyone in the audience. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>